like to tell you about a kayaking trip I took with my friend Jack. We made a lot of decisions that day. Some good, some not so good. It's a day I'll never forget. That gal was lucky to be alive. This better be good. I got it. The boat? Yeah, it's beautiful. How about you give me some pointers? Right, look, I'm maybe like a week ahead of you. That makes you my coach. Can you drag yourself out of bed by 10 o'clock? Uh... Jack started paddling a few weeks ago. Now I had the boat, too. And this cove seemed like the perfect spot to start our adventure. You don't really think we're going to need that, do you? I mean, we're just going to be paddling along the shore, right? Besides, uh, I forgot mine. It won't take long to run back and get it. I'll get the rest of the stuff ready. The day's half over already. Besides, I'm not planning on going swimming. Okie dokie. Patience isn't my strong suit. I knew the water was cold, but it was slick calm, as they say around here. And besides, the plan was to hug the shore. So that's how our adventure began. Jack dressed for the water, which, by the way, was only 50 degrees. I dressed for the air. It was just one of a whole chain of decisions we'd made that day. And though we didn't realize it at the time, we'd also made some, well, non-decisions. You know, the stuff we'd never even thought about. Like, what do we know about the local waters? We hadn't brought a chart, checked the weather forecast, or even told anybody where we were going or when we'd return. All these things had escaped the scrutiny of our razor-sharp minds. We paddled down the coast in clear, calm weather. And as the hours passed, my confidence grew. Jack showed me some of the techniques he'd learned. The scenery was incredible. Life was good. Hey, look at that cove over there. Hey, that looks cool. Want to check it out? Yeah. Whoa, think. Guess what time it is? No idea. One o'clock? Try 3.30. Maybe we ought to get heading back. I'm just starting to get the hang of this. How about we head out to that island on the way back? I don't know. It looks kind of far. It's a beautiful day. There's barely any wind. Come on, it'll be a piece of cake. <laughs> piece of cake. That reminds me. Hmm. Okie dokie. Perhaps the explorer in me was feeling the tug of the unknown. But pointing our bows towards that tiny offshore island didn't seem like a big deal. It looked like only a short paddle, and it was more or less on the way back. I guess we didn't really think about it. As we paddled away from shore, I noticed a current nudging the lobster floats. The farther out we got, the stronger it seemed. How you doing, Kate? Really moving. We're gonna have to haru if you want to make it to that island. All right. Can you do it? Yeah. Let's go. The island wasn't looking any closer when, in a matter of a few minutes, fog rolled in. It was getting hard to see the island, and we could barely see where we'd been. We should have turned around then. Look at the current, it's pushing us to the right. We need to adjust. Wait. You hear that? It's just a boat. Yeah, but it's a boat that's getting closer. He's not gonna be able to see us. Hey! 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 Wow, that was close. Without a horn or some kind of radar reflector, we were stealth kayaks in the fog, completely undetectable. 
What's more, it never occurred to us to bring a GPS or even a compass. We didn't have the tools to find our way. Hey, Archie, how's that engine of yours working today? Yeah, the alternator is still acting up. I got to go have a look at it. Hate to do it on a day like this. Uh, Southwest is building over here. Yeah, it's freezing up here. It's blowing a good 25. As quickly as the fog rolled in, it was gone, blown away on the afternoon breeze. We'd been paddling blind for over an hour, but now that we could see the island, it didn't look much closer. Jack, we've got to be about halfway there. Yeah, maybe, but the wind's really kicking up. Truth be told, I was running out of steam. Jack had been snacking all day long. I hadn't eaten a thing, and it was turning into a long, hard paddle. I was beginning to wonder if we'd bitten off more than we could chew. Jack, I really don't like this. Maybe we can make it to those rocks over there. Go ahead. I'm right behind you. Okay. It was just a bare little rock off the end of the island, but it was the only thing between us and the ocean. We were being swept out to sea by the tide. We were both a little scared. Jack hit the accelerator, but I was out of gas. I got really far behind. When Jack turned to look for me, he caught a wave wrong. That's when things really fell apart. I saw Jack flip and felt a rush of adrenaline as I paddled hard towards him. I'm still not sure what happened. One minute I was fine, the next I was upside down in that icy water, fighting to hold my breath. Against the current, Jack couldn't pull his boat into the rocks, so he just swam for it. His wetsuit made a big difference. In the frigid water, he still had enough strength to make it to dry land. And that same current was quickly sweeping me away. I'm in the water! No way I'd ever have made it to shore. I can't get back into my boat, Jack! We'd really gotten ourselves in a jam. Jack couldn't help me. I couldn't help myself, much less Jack. There wasn't another boat in sight. It'd be dark in a couple of hours, and I was floating towards Spain in a frigid sea. Kind of a one-person Titanic. If only we'd known about these tides and checked the forecast. If only I'd practiced some of those self-rescue techniques I'd read about. If only we'd stayed closer together so we could have helped each other. If only. Funny thing, I wasn't even struggling. I now know I was in the initial stages of a condition called hypothermia. Without a wetsuit or dry suit to help insulate me from the cold water, my body was losing heat faster than it could produce it. My cold muscles lost any coordination and strength they might have retained after a long day of paddling with almost nothing to eat or drink. My cooling brain was sluggish at best. My life jacket was the only thing keeping me afloat. Even so, every minute in that chilly water was bringing me closer to death. Eventually, I'd lose consciousness, and the end would be certain. Looking back, I could see we'd set ourselves up for this. Eager novices, we'd paddled away without the skills or equipment we needed. That and some sketchy decisions during the day, and we'd made ourselves really vulnerable. Then all it took was a minor mishap like a capsize, and we were sliding down that slippery slope that ends in tragedy. We could no longer help ourselves, and if it hadn't been for a lobsterman on a route he rarely uses, well... As you can see, I really shouldn't be here. I got a miracle. I'm not counting on another. Next time, I'm counting on a better plan. For sure, we'll be sea kayaking again. But the next paddling adventure will better suit the skills, equipment, and experience we have. And I'll think hard about those little decisions along the way to make sure we're not setting ourselves up for a really bad day. I've got to keep this old engine running, you know. Gotta make a dollar. It's the only reason I went that way.